Hi, I'm Jana with the Jana Sells Homes team. Hi, I'm Roche with the Roche team. Welcome to another edition of Real Estate FAQs. Where to start when you're moving? Hosted by Jana Schmidt and Roche Boston with their guest, Amy Wojtke. Today, I want to introduce you to our guest speaker who is helping us to help you prepare when you're moving. Amy is the greater Seattle professional organizer, turning couples' stressful home transitions into peaceful new beginnings. She guides clients through the home organizing, remodel, and relocation so they can experience more time, energy, and a renewed sense of home. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm doing great. It's so good to be with you here today. I'm super excited. Thank you for being our guest. Yes, we're super excited to have you. And I know our clients will benefit from this conversation we're having with you today. Yay. So, you know, I have a burning question here, Amy, and that is how long have you been rummaging through people's closets? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> it's over 15 years now. Probably wow. closer to 20. <laughs> you know, we hear about professional organizers, but would you just like... Give us a little background here. How in the world does somebody become a professional organizer? And, you know, what was that path for you? Just tell us a little bit about your story. Sure. Um, so I kind of uh, happy accident, I guess, or um, sort of um, wasn't my direct career path. I have a degree in psychology and I thought I wanted to be a counselor. And then when I interviewed for my first job, I was like, ooh wrong fit. <laughs> so um, anyway, long story short about that, um, I um, was uh, everywhere that I was, I kind of fell into admin work. And then everywhere I worked, I was like organizing the spaces and redoing them and everything. And one time, I, uh, eventually a manager a place I worked at was like, mm, you're really good at this organizing thing. Have you like ever thought about becoming a professional organizer? And I was like, what? <laughs> so I went home and looked it up. I was like, hey, mom, <laughs> like, what do you think? And she's like, oh, let's do it. So she helped me design my first brochure. And my first business was called Peace of Time. Um, so that was way back in the 90s. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah. And so um, here I am, <laughs> 2021. Well, you know, I love the idea of that you talked about on our guest blog. And I want to jump into that. Um, but first, I want to share a recent experience that I had. I had a, a couple moving out of state. And, you know, I wish it would have occurred to me to bring you on board for that because I just did not realize how much opportunity there is in this regard. I think you could have saved them a lot of money in helping them know what to pack, uh, saving them money on what they're shipping across, you know, state lines, as well as just making that whole process so much easier. So would you share a little bit with us about the benefit of hiring a professional organizer prior to when you move or put your home on the market for sale? Sure. Um, well, one of the big things is I work like primarily with couples, not exclusively, like that's not to say that we don't help single people too. <laughs> uh, but a lot of the people that come to us are couples and um, in some kind of um, what I call like a double whammy life transition. So they might be um, going through, they might be like merging together or moving together where they're already share a home, or they might be moving apart um, and going into separate homes. Um, but often when you're working with couples, you know, you have like um, different dynamics of personalities and the ways that people do things like um, for um, my uh, Scotland clients, um, like she was like the list maker, super organized type. And he was like the laissez faire, I'll get it done mm -hmm. someday kind of thing. And so like when you have like these two type of personalities, like trying to do something like an international relocation together. So like it was a career transition plus a move. So a move in itself, right, is like, is a, is a challenging moves are considered like one of the top five life, stressful life experiences that we go through. Absolutely. And then when you add uh, uh, international, I call, I call international moves. I'm like, international moves are like local moves on steroids because they literally, and the list is so long and so overwhelming of all the things you have to do to move 
internationally. Um, and so then when you couple that and then add a career transition to that and then multiple other things, like they had more than like a double whammy. They had like then the kids like going off to college and they got to settle that. And then they got to find a place to board the cats while they do this temporary thing. Da, da, da. Like, I mean, just went, the list was like, just went on and on. And, and then especially like a, a two month time frame. I mean, like, you know, the eyes are crossed and the brain is boggled and the personalities are doing things differently. And when you're in these kind of situations, it's just like you having a third party. And you know, she says it in the testimony that like having the third party there to sort of help navigate and give to do lists and walk through the processes and what do we do now and how do we do it? And who, who do we hire what else? Do we hire them? Like all those things are literally like sanity saving, um, stress reducing, mm -hmm. just knowing that, that they're like, here and I'm like okay I got you you know it's like it's hugely supportive and I um the testimony says like I probably saved their marriage during a very intense time and um and other couples have said that yeah it was just like we didn't like we didn't have to think we didn't have to think about it we didn't have to argue about anything because the list was laid out someone else came in and like said it laid it all out you know so it's a huge like and then it also, um, like cost reduction. So, um, like, oh my God, please don't move with things that you don't need. Like, and if you need help supporting that in like how, how many, how long you've been carrying around those 20 boxes from college, you know, and let, let's just handle it now and get it done, you know, because the amount of time that you will, the investment that you will spend in moving something moving, keep moving something versus like spending a little bit of time with an organizer to sort of sort through it and delegate it somewhere else. That's not in your position, you know, donate it, recycle it, however it needs to go. Um, I mean, it's a cost, it's a cost benefit analysis. You spend a little bit more time, but you also save money because you're not moving that yet again and carrying that continuing to schlep the, you know, the burden along in the back of your mind. Oh, there's that thing and that closet that I got to still sort kind of scenario, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's why I so much wish I would have brought you on board in that last example. I will in the future, I'll definitely make sure to connect you. Um, just seeing how having basically like a moving coach. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, kind of our uh, moving therapist. I've been likened to uh, like a wedding planner, but for your move. <laughs> oh, I like that. For <laughs> or, sure. Yeah, or a marriage therapist, you know. I mean, yeah. sometimes really like, and I, I'm sure that, um, that you guys go through this too. When you're going through something as uh, intense and as intimate and as, um, and as precious as relocating a home, you know, you know, uprooting your home life and moving it somewhere else, you know that um, uh, it's a really intense, it can be a really intense process. And I mean, sometimes I'm just sitting with a client and listening to them. Like uh, one gal was an instance where they were separating and I was moving just with her, not with him, but she was so distraught, like emotionally about the separation. And it's like, um, you know, sometimes we're just handholding and listening. Yeah, so, Absolutely. Yeah, um, Amy, I have a, a good question for you. Um, should a client hesitate to pick up the phone and give you a call because they might feel embarrassed about all of the things that they have, those 20 boxes from college or some of the things that they have been hoarding around, you know, for a while. And sometimes myself and Jenna, we run into those type of clients and they feel a little embarrassed either, uh, even for us to enter into their home. So should, how, sh how do you feel about that? Or do you just come in and meet them where they are? Or should they try and do a few things before they come in and before you come in and see them? Um, yes. So absolutely. We don't want people to be embarrassed. I mean, they are anyway that you, that you can't help that people feel that way. But really what we're here to do is provide like a shame free zone. I call this the shame free zone. So, um, so, and we like to, we like to see things as they are. So if you're like, oh, I got to clean up before my organizer comes, it's like, no, because then we're not seeing things in real time. Like we're not seeing things like the way that they actually are. So when we see things like, you know, 
like real life, you know, as it is, then we, it helps us to gauge, um, like where you're at and where your challenges might be at. You know, if you cleaned up your challenge before we got there, then we, you know, we might hear, we might talk about that it's your challenge, but we don't see it. And so having the visual picture for us is like super key. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. Like shame for zone. Please don't be embarrassed. We understand that you will be. And we're, and we're, um, I mean, if you want us to crack the whip on you, we totally will. Like, you know, but, but also like, you know, a, we're very compassionate and supportive and just, um, you know, we just kind of meet you where you're at. Awesome. Uh, you know, sw- switching gears a little bit um, on our uh, blog page, you mentioned the idea of when you're looking at your new place to imagine walking through, like you're giving a friend a tour. Yeah. And I thought this was so cool. And I love your little um, cheat sheet that you provided on how to, you know, kind of think about that, but you, put to imagine a scent or a texture and I just wanted to ask what are some examples of scents and textures that clients have shared with you when envisioning their future home that's a great question I love that and then very like tactile and scent oriented so this is a great question um so um Sometimes it might be like an aquarium. So like sometimes you don't like really think about like the sounds, like what you might think about what your home looks like or how it feels like in your heart kind of feel, but maybe you don't think about like, what are the textures? Like, um, so, um, some people might say, um, oh, like there's, um, there's like, you know, velvety fabrics or, um, or, um, everything's very natural, natural fabric kind of feeling. Um, uh, um, someone said, um, music. So sometimes music comes into it, but there might be something like the, even like really subtle, which could be like an aquarium. Like maybe you hear a fish tank in the background. Maybe you've always wanted a fish tank, but you never like had the space for it or something. And so it's something you want to bring into your life. So if you're, you know, you're writing that into your vision for your new home, maybe you hear a fish tank in the background. Maybe it's a water feature in your entryway. Um, I love water features. I'm so excited to get one of those. Um, maybe it's the sound of music. Um, maybe you want a place that has um, like a movie theater or something. So maybe there's movies playing, you know? So, um, so yeah, people, um, that's actually... I think one of the things that's a little bit more challenging for the people to bring into mm-hmm. their vision. Um, but I have had people be like, you know, the kids are playing. It's a sound of entertainment because people will be embarrassed to entertain in their space um, because of like how their home has been or whatever. And so they want in their new place to have it be a place where it's welcoming of entertainment. So it's happy and there's laughter and stuff like that. So um of uh, one of my clients we just knew said it smells fresh and clean. The places that she's lived have often been like bully and stuff like that. And so like this move was a really big, like she's buying like, I think her first home. And so she was very emotional about it. And when I talked to her, asked her about the vision, she started crying. She's like, nobody ever asked me that before. You know? <laughs> it was so beautiful. I was like, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it is moving for sure. Um, and, uh, with, with all of your projects, um, Amy, when you, uh, come in and you start talking to the client, is your service by the hour or is it by the project? Everything that's done by the project. Um, we do, so I do the complimentary consultation on phone or video oh, nice. and then, um, and then I get an idea of what's going on for the, with the client's needs. And then I step off and I do an estimate. We jump back on for, um, an estimate review call. And, um, and then, so basically, and I just make, I go through and make sure that everything that we're all on the same page, like I heard exactly what they were saying anything else, uh, has anything else come up that we need to add to it where you're at? I give them the uh, cost estimate of where it will be. And then if they have any questions or concerns, we handle it right there on the call so that it is, it's, it makes the process faster 
and then they can do all the signing and stuff online. Um, but yeah, so we do, I do an estimate. Um, and so, um, so it's, we do an estimate and then it's like 50% down to start and then the balance do it on completion and then based on the actual hours worth, uh, like the, the invoice of estimate. So do you, um, is there a minimum of what you will do? Uh, like just one bedroom or one room versus a whole house? I mean, what's your minimum that you will do? A uh, great question. So the minimum service, excuse me, the minimum um, service hours that we provide is three hours, three, three hours. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so um, which is like great. So I call it I call it like A to Z or L M N O P. So it's like so people are like, you know, oh, my God, like if you could just take three hours off my plate, for example, like, you know, when clients come on and they they have to do schedule a bunch of services that things that need to be done and stuff like that and um you know maybe they don't have time to schedule it um or or whoever it is they need or they don't know who to go to which is common um and they're like oh my god amy could you just please schedule the movers schedule the cleaners um you know uh, schedule the haulers or whatever like you know in three hours i can schedule like several you know sets of people and so they just need scheduling support like project management oh, we can do wow. that. or um you know if they need something more like you know could you just come and do like one downsizing session with us or a planning session we've had that where clients are just like their eyeballs are like Burr, you know and they're like have no idea like which way to turn and they just like looking at everything going well we think we could pack it but we don't know like where to start and uh, you right. know and so we'll come in and like make a list and get them set up with all the planning and the timeline and everything. So that can be done in a uh, downsizing can be done in three hours. A planning session can be done in three hours. New home layout can be done in approximately three hours, depending on the size of the home, which we typically work up to as large as four to five bedrooms. We tend to not go or not in the McMansion um, department at this right. point, but that's um that's great. So you do things as small as like I'm gonna go in and help you put your ki kitchen pantry together. Yes. Or I'm gonna go in and help you do your laundry room. Or I'm gonna come in and help you declutter it all and get you packed and moved. Yeah. So you offer a variety of services. Yeah, and also um you know on the other end of when people move into their new home, um the you know there's the also the option for that. So they might need like. Some people want the full unpack. Some people want a partial unpack. M most people, a lot of people opt for some version of partial to, to not quite entirely, you know, but, um, um, but, you know, some version of partial, whatever that's a half, one third, three quarters kind of thing. Um, and then at some point they're like, okay, we'll handle the rest of these boxes kind of thing. But we have had a, uh, we have had a client had clients, you know, have us do the whole thing. Um, and, um, you know, but primarily the most popular sort of unpacking uh, support that we provide is the kitchen because everybody's got to eat, you know, that's the place where, and the kitchen is the thing that takes the longest because they tend to have the most parts and pieces aside from maybe like your closet. And unless you have some extravagant like office or, other kind of entertainment setup or something like that. Perfect. What a great gift to give to yourself though, is just to, you know, let somebody else analyze it and figure out where to put stuff. Yeah. And it's all catered to, um, you know, we have uh, conversations with the clients. We want the, um, the home to be reflective and supportive of what you're doing in your next life adventure. So, we have the conversation with you. Some people are like, you know what? Do what makes sense. Like it, like it, I just need my kitchen to function. I need to be able to you know, get around in my bathroom or, you know, whatever their, whatever their, uh, whatever the room is, just make it make sense. And we're like, okay, so we do that. Um, but some people want to be more involved in it. And so we walk through and we plan things and we're like, what's your pattern? Like when you come through, when you're in the kitchen, like, you know, what do you do? What, you know, what are your habits in the kitchen? Like when you walk in the door, what happens to the stuff that's on your body and where is that going to go? You know, so people have uh, 
landing spaces for their stuff to go so that you're not like coming home and dropping everything on the floor and a pile of clutter and then you know that's a common thing too too is what do you do when you come in the door it's not my stuff that's the problem amy it's my husband's <laughs> <laughs> opposite right? styles <laughs> right yeah as Rache and i know sometimes people need to move for health reasons for family yes. reasons and there's the, the stuff and what to do with it can be paralyzing. Yes. And so, uh, again, having somebody with your skill set come th- be able to come through and, and help remove that paralyzation and get people on with their lives. Yeah. Um, I mean, what a, what a gift to give to somebody because the last thing you want is your stuff owning you, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, in the, in the end, right, we're talking about life quality, quality of life. Like there may be stuff that's required for life activities and that kind of thing. But ultimately, our lives are made up of a series of experiences, some of which may or may not involve stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, it's our relationships with each other, you know, maybe or, you know, if you're more of a solo kind of person, our relationships with ourselves. Um, and you know, I mean, there are some people that maybe, you know, they're like, no, I'm good. Like, oh, whatever my space is total chaos. And I'm okay with that. You know, obviously those aren't the people that call us, you know, but like, um, but really having, having your, your space, like narrowed down and zeroed in on, in a way that supports you so that at the end of the day, I mean, like, what well, we all got enough stuff to like manage in life already, right? And especially now, like, it's just gotten even more intense. So, you know, why not like invest in like having a space that you can just like exist in and not have to manage? Like, are you know, are you managing your life or is your life managing you? You know, are you managing your space or is your space managing you? You know, like, who? if you don't like dusting, then don't have a bunch of trinkets, you know, I mean, like there's things that you can do to sort of alleviate that process or, you know, enclose them in something and then you have less things to dust or whatever. I personally hate dusting. So, and I also don't like clutter because in my brain, there's a lot going on already. I'm like an ideas person and, and I'm a Gemini and, you know, I'm a, you know, so like for me, like I need my space, (laughs) I need my space to be like, Right. you know <laughs> and yeah you know but and also like I'm human so even my space isn't always perfect you know and like I think that is maybe some kind of myth that people think that because you're an organizer well, your home must always be perfectly organized and amazing I'm like well there's a baseline <laughs> you know there's a baseline organizing that I have but it requires maintenance right and some days you don't feel like maintenance you're like I'm not adult today or really I'm an adulting this week you know it's just like it's okay like you you just have to find what's the what's your happy place Mm -hmm. and your happy place doesn't have to be my happiest place or Jana's happy place or Reche's happy space or you know like we all have our different ways that we like our spaces right and So again, back to the shame-free zone, like let's find what works for you, not what works on Pinterest or what works for your neighbor or your mother or, you know, whatever, you know, so it's about works for you. And if what works for you is having a pile of papers on your desk, which by the way, that works for me because I'm a visual and I know that in the pile is these things that I'm working on. Sometimes I put it away. Sometimes I don't. (laughs) And I'm okay with that. Like, that's my happy place. Well, you know, what's interesting to me is as you're discussing that and the quality of life, you know, I can't help but to turn it into an economic uh, issue. Real estate now is selling three, four, five hundred dollars a square foot. And if you can save yourself 10, 15, 25, 50 square feet, of living space because it's better organized. That's money you can put in your retirement account, your fund fund money. Um, you know, and, and while I'm on price per square foot, we often have people say, you know, well, what's the average price per square foot? 
to which I'll reply, you know, well, what are we talking about? You know, you can look at price per square foot in an old rundown RV or a big, beautiful yacht. The yacht was designed well. So three, I'll take 300 square feet on a yacht any day, right? I mean, that's, that's a well-organized space. And so I think if we bring that concept into our homes of let's design this well, let's organize it around our life. Um, it, I mean, again, I keep using the word, what a gift you can give to yourself, because that's really what I'm thinking when I think of the service you provide is it's a gift you give to yourself. Yeah, the service to me is what Amy provides is that you make life easy for families and for people and for couples. Yes. Yeah. And I think that um, uh, I like what Jana's saying about that. It's like a gift. Mm -hmm. um, it, it reminds me also that um, there's I, I had a client that said um, something to something along the lines of. Um, like for her, like some people might consider it organization or hiring like move support or that kind of stuff to be like a luxury, you know? And she's like, it's not a luxury for me. It's a necessity because like, um, you know, people are busy. So if, you know, and moves need to happen. So, you know, if you're, um, if you're um, lacking or I call it poor in the time department, energy department, health department, um, um, fun department, you know, like if you hand off, even if you just hand off three hours, that's three hours of your life that you could be doing something else, something you'd rather be doing, uncrossing your eyeballs so you can go handle that part of the move over there, you know, um, or um, like in, um, some clients, um, these clients, um, they were um, um, in West Seattle and they were, we need to sell our house. And so, so we can move to a temporary house because the selling like time frame wasn't working out. Mm -hmm. And so they had to like let go of the house that they wanted to buy. So they're like, we got to sell our house first so we can move into this temporary place, finish up the school year with the kid and everything. And then we'll move to that, buy a house in that next town over that we want. Um, but for them, like they had a bunch of things that needed to be attended to in the home, remodeling that kind of stuff. And so, you know, taking a chunk of that, you know, divide that off, hand that off to us, handle some things, know where things go, uh, organize the movers, you know, all that kind of stuff, handle that. So they can be over there doing that and uncrossing their eyeballs just that much more, you know. So, you know, that in that respect, you know not a luxury, a necessity for sanity, like so that you feel good, you know, you can actually maybe like even enjoy your relocation process because it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> I've had clients say like, well, that was the easiest move I ever did. <laughs> you know, you know, I was at work and my house got moved. Whoa, you know, come home, turn the key and go, you know. So I have another client that said uh, her testimonial um she brags about being able to entertain on her home the same day that she entertained on her balcony the same day she moved i call it same day barbecue so basically oh, it. she moved in and then her house wasn't entirely unpacked you know but it was in a way that she could entertain on her balcony and in part of her home you know because it was well enough on its way from receiving support because she didn't have to do anything she's literally like where the move day is happening. We're all there on site making stuff happen. And she's like, well, what should I do? And I was like, oh, let's sit down and relax. She's like, what? <laughs> like literally like she could see like this, like, I don't understand does not compute because she's a, you know, go, go get her person anyway. So she sat down and wrote a social media post about us, <laughs> but literally like she didn't sit down. There was nothing for her to do because we had it handled, you know? So. So tell us, how do people get a hold of you, Amy? What's the best way to start a working relationship with you and making space for you? Absolutely. The best next step is to jump onto my website, amywoodkey.com. And there's a schedule button. You can schedule a consultation or you can go um, amywoodkey.com forward slash contact. Takes you to the actual contact page again to the schedule button. But pretty much like 
on the homepage. It's a couple different places to push the buttons, make space for you, schedule consultation. And then they'll take you to a little brief questionnaire and um, answer some baseline questions about your relocation project and your baseline needs and what's driving you nuts. And, um, and then schedule an appointment. And then I will see you on the video consult. Love it. Most people opt for the video. It's phone or video, but it's really it's really easiest if it's a video because then we can also do it with a little walkthrough, you know. But if that's not an option, also we can do, um, you know, they can send us a video later, or we can send someone on site to do a video. Is there a geographic area to keep in mind? <clears throat> uh, we primarily serve within a thirty minute radius of uh, Northgate area. Um, we do serve outside that area, but we just start to like. Um, charge a little um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, travel fee travel. travel fee yeah yeah based on based on um, our our rates so um, but it's pretty minute for you know mm -hmm. for versus not like a giant fee or whatever so we include um, you know like the bridge toll there and back we sort of expect if there's a toll we expect it there and back like that's included um if you um we haven't yet taken care of anybody that requires a ferry trip um but we're not also opposed to that so if you require ferry travel like that will would be an extra cost okay good to know yeah good to know. so but otherwise yeah pretty much 30 mile radius and then um but we have served people like out in Sammamish and Rainier Valley and Redmond. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, that's great, Amy. I've learned so much from you today, Jana. I know you have as well. And um, folks, do yourself a favor. Call Amy. She makes her life easier. I think I might even be calling you soon for my for my own <laughs> project. Um, but I, I learned a lot. I really appreciate you joining uh, me and uh, Jana today. You know, um, this is part of our, our concierge service that we like to um, offer to our clients, along with other services that we we offer. But to be able to sit down and talk with you today and, and to know that there is a professional organizer out there to help our clients make their life easier. And then also it makes our life easier when we're dealing with our clients as well. So I thank you so much for being here today. Um, I look forward to talking with you um, soon. Um, maybe we'll get you on again and talk about maybe what we should do to pack up and organize uh, by the end of the summer and then going into the winter. I think that would be some great tips that our clients would be looking for. Jana, do you have any last words? I just want to say to the viewers out there, hey, send us your organization challenges and we'll throw them over to Amy and we'll see what we can uh, what we can do for you. So in the comments below, let us know, you know, what what areas are are the ones that make you want to, you know, turn and walk the other way. Uh, is it your closet? Is it your kitchen? Is it the garage? I bet the garage. I bet that's one that could. Me, yeah. me, Maybe me. I'm sharing my own secrets. Oh, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> I call all the things that make you want to rip your face off. <laughs> yeah, garage is, is, is my problem. So I, I'm going to raise my guilty hand. Yeah. Yes, please do um, send uh, or, you know, send or write in the comments, like, what is it that you want to know about moving, prepare to moving, engaging services, you know, everything like before, during and after your relocation, like, I want to know too. Like you want to know, I want to know, we want to know what are your burning questions and we want to be able to answer those. So if you're dying to hear about something and, you know, have that be a topic of a blog, a upcoming, you know, blog and video topic, like, please, you know, let us know. We'll be excited to answer. All right. Well, we can't wait to see you again and we'll have you back in a couple months and we'll uh, answer hopefully some of these design or uh, uh, organizing challenges. And again, thank you, Amy. You're, you're a rock star. <laughs> thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, Amy. See you soon. Hey, want to uh, give a special thanks again to our guest, Amy. We so appreciate her skills and her talents and who she is as a person. Uh, as part of our concierge service, we're always looking to bring professionals like Amy to our clientele, make their lives easier. Yes. Um, thanks again to Amy and Jana 
This has been a wealth of information. We love to be able to give these concierge services. What we mean by concierge, we use this fancy name, but we can get you a maintenance guy, handyman, lawn services, a painter, electrician, a plumber, all of those things that you may need in preparing to get your home uh, to go on the market. We have those services for you. So again, please don't forget to put your comments down below. Please don't forget to subscribe, follow us, call us, email us, um, and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can get more updates for future shows like this. So again, thank you. I can't wait to see you guys again. Jana, I love doing these conversations with you. It's always fun. I'll see you soon, you guys. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, Rache. Bye, all. And that concludes another edition of Real Estate FAQs. Subscribe to be notified of future episodes. Like and share with your friends. Produced by Retro Studio. Thank you for watching. Have a happy always.